All right. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This is our third, my third installment of live streaming, live stream journaling. Um, so, so far we have, have covered um, watercolor paint and uh, watercolor pencil. Sorry, I'm just trying to get myself together here. Um, so yeah, so we've started with some watercolor and some watercolor pencil already. Um, so if you haven't seen those videos, they are saved on the Eric Scott Art Studio Facebook page, um, the page that you're watching this from right now. So you can always go back and watch those anytime that you want. And the nice thing is that this is not like a cumulative thing. It's not like you're missing anything. Um, you're gonna see some stuff in the, the journal that, yeah, I've already done, but what I'm sharing today is about collage. So you can do collage at any point in your journal and maybe you already have lots of pages where you can go back and add some collage. Um, so that's what we're gonna focus on today is working with some collage. Um, if you don't mind, if you're tuning in uh, live, if you can just you know pop in and, and say hello or uh, good morning or anything like that. So I see Carissa's here and Michaela's here. Um, so anyway, if, uh, like I said, we're gonna be working with some collage. So if you wanna work along with me, awesome. Um, gonna show you my basic technique for working with collage and share some strategies that maybe you can use um, in your book. So um, anyway, let me kind of flip over so you can kind of see my workspace, which is this one. <clears throat> All right, so I've got, I've got my um, journal, of course. I've got a pair of scissors. I've got my, what well, I call it fodder, um, my collage materials, my ephemera, um, and I've got my glue stick. I use Uhu glue stick. Uh, I think it's one of the best. It's an acid free if that matters to you. Um, it's archival so it's a good quality. I know some people hate glue stick and I think it's because people don't necessarily use it effectively so I'm going to show you how to use it effectively. And then I have over here I've just I have some scrap paper so these are just some old um, copies handouts that I've gotten so um, I'm going to use that as glue paper so that I don't get my work surface um, all messy or anything like that so um, anyway so I've got all that set up and let's talk about the fodder the collage materials um, so I've got a, a, a bunch of different things here and everything from maps to envelopes uh, to bingo cards from a fundraiser that my wife and I went to uh, to some practice art to some book pages there's another piece of envelope I like these security envelopes because they have a pattern inside and I've got some graph paper um, a beer label no I have not been drinking this early in the morning um, and then a couple different maps and diagrams as well. So uh, if you notice, it's none of this stuff is specifically bought for working in my journal. I know a lot of people go out to stores and, and um, they go out to antique shops and they find like vintage photographs or they find all this other stuff to work with. I, I, I don't. Um, so for me, it's working in the journal is more a personal thing and so if I go to the store and I'm buying fodder if I'm buying stuff to put in the journal that's not super super personal to me um, the same thing with going to antique shops and uh, finding vintage papers or vintage photographs that stuff isn't personal to me and I don't really have that much of a connection but that's just me I mean you can use anything that you want but what I'm focusing on now is using sort of generic uh, collage materials things that I just find you know uh, things that I've accumulated over the years um, things that are specific to me so some of this stuff like I said with that bing bingo card that was from something that my wife and I did together so every time I see that I'll think of that um, and just you know using things like maps and security envelopes it's just a way to take the the 
as I've called it in uh, one of our books, the flotsam and jetsam of of everyday life. And so being able to to um, really, you know, just look around and find this uh, this random and kind of generic stuff. So anyway, just just a little word about using collage materials, about finding the, the things that you want to glue into your book. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and uh, go back and let's talk about collaging. Um, so yeah, so collaging, I've, like I said, I've been working in this book and I've got some watercolor, some watercolor pencil. Uh, I'm gonna use my collage. Maybe I'll start off with this book page. Um, you know, this is just a, an old paperback that started falling apart. So I'm gonna use this like I was using the watercolor and the watercolor pencil to just start something random or to use some simple shapes. I'm not worrying so much about it being like being able to read it. Um, I'm not worrying about using very specific images right now. So notice that I don't have magazines. I don't have photographs. I've just, I have this stuff and I think it works really great as a way to create shapes, texture, um, and some structure on our pages. So, you know, if I just take this and I think about like, okay, I've got the rectangle and that reflects the squares that are over here. Um, you know, and but that those words create a nice texture and then maybe I'll end up working around it. So I think I am going to glue that here. So that's where my scrap paper comes in. Um, I don't want to get glue all over my journal and all over my uh, work surface. So if I have my scrap paper, then I can spread the glue and get it all over the scrap paper and not get it on my book. Um, so one of the reasons I like the Uhu is that this is the magic blue. Uh, it's a dark blue color, but it does dry totally clear. Some glue sticks that are colored, usually purple, uh, claim that they dry clear, but they kind of leave this brownish tinted uh, glue down. So I know that the Uhu really um, covers well and it dries totally clear. I think the problem is that when people use the the glue a lot of times especially uh young students is i find that they'll, they'll like put like a like a little bit like right in the middle and it's like that's not going to work you really need to cover it so by putting it down i can put a lot of glue i really want to cover the whole piece and that's why using this blue you can see how it spreads out and it shows me how much glue i have so I can see that. And notice how I, I'm going back and forth and really covering that really well with glue. And then the nice thing is I can use my glue stick to pick it up and that way I don't get glue all over my fingers. And then I can position it wherever I want. Now, if this was a really thick or glossy material, I really wanna rub it in for a long time. This is a thin piece of paper from a paperback book. So it's really stuck down immediately. Uh, but with a thick glossy paper, um, you might have to rub it for a while until it really starts to dry. Sometimes what I like to do is just turn over the back and I can rub gently and just do that for a few minutes just to make sure that it's really stuck. Like I said, with a real thin paper like this, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's stuck pretty immediately. But if I'm using something that's thicker or heavier, then definitely I want to think about um, how that can be um, used. So um, anyway, so I've got you know nice little shape and I can go through and find a lot of different things that I could use. So maybe I want to use this, but maybe, hmm, let's see, I just had an idea, I think it might be kind of interesting to use this to cover a page or maybe I can turn it this way and have it go across a page so sometimes you can completely cover a page with a piece of collage and have that as the beginning of it um, another thing that I've been doing here lately that I really like is to 
wrap collage. So if I take my piece and cut it, and it's a little long. So what I find if it's a little long, line it up with one edge and then take your thumb or your finger and rub it on the opposite edge. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of a line there. And then I can cut. And so then I know it's going to be the right width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold this in half, this little strip of paper. doesn't have to be perfect because what I want to do is to wrap it around the edge and so that way that that red yellow and orange painting will show up on both sides but if I fold it first it makes it a little bit easier um, so I'm going to take my scrap paper and just like I've done before I'm going to spread my glue all over the back and again that dark blue glue is going to dry perfectly clear so even if it oozes out it's going to be nice and clear so really it's it's getting the entire back coated with the glue and i think that is probably the the biggest mistake people make is that they don't cover the entire back all right and then i can take this and make sure the edge of the page goes right up to the fold Okay. And again, just rub it for a few moments. If you're afraid of glue oozing out, you can always put one of your scrap papers on top of it. But now that kind of wraps it around. Okay, So I can kind of do that. I can cut out and use big shapes. Um, another thing to think about are kind of lines of... of, um, of collage a lot of times we don't think about that but let's go back I want to show you something in this book um, there are a couple things that actually start as lines and you can see it starts right here this uh, it's actually a piece of tracing paper with writing on it and it goes and then it wraps around and you can see it better it goes through here okay and then if I turn it it wraps around here um, we'll be working with some writing later but the other thing is the map I don't know if you've noticed this line of a map okay so it, it goes through and then it wraps around comes that way so it starts right there so that's another thing to think about is that you can connect pages so one of the things I've been really focusing on in this journal is uh, connecting pages so this wraps around there's a big piece of map here and then it starts off up here and it goes and then it actually wraps around through the window takes off goes that way however there's a little piece here that wraps around and lines up with that one and with that one and then that wraps around goes all the way down all the way around and wraps around it goes through the hole comes down and then it ends here so that's something to think about is that your collage pieces can help tie things together. So if I take something like a map page, and what I want to do is to cut strips. And you could cut this on a paper cutter. But if I cut thin strips, it acts like a line. Yes, technically it's a long, skinny shape, but the strips act like a line of collage and I can do some really interesting things. So that, that's one of the ways that I, I don't think a lot of people think about using their collage materials is to create lines and structure. They just really think about like, oh, I'm going to glue, glue this picture down or I'm going to glue this, um, glue this, uh, this image down or I'm going to glue this piece of paper down. And I, I don't like this kind of darker part at the bottom, so let me cut those off. Okay, so I've got 
some strips of maps. And now I just have to find a place. All right, so here's one. Here you can see I've done something similar. This is from a photocopy of one of my artworks. So I took a photograph of it, printed it out, made a black and white photocopy of it. Maybe this would be a good place to pick this up. Now, I love using maps because of the it has imagery and words and numbers on it, but they tend to be kind of small. So I think I'm going to take this and go across and wrap it around. Let's make sure. Yeah, nothing really on the other side. Um, I'm going to change my glue paper, get that out of the way, so I have something different. All right. And then just do this over here. I'm going to slide that over. And again, I can always pick it up with the glue stick. Okay, and then just start that down. And pick up the page and then wrap it around. And if I want it to turn, all I have to do is to take one of the maps and cut a little piece off. And so now it turns, and then I can take this part and go that way. So when I'm gluing on this glue paper, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not putting my piece down where it's sticky with glue. That's why I have multiple pieces. Sometimes people use old telephone books, if they even publish telephone books anymore. Um, catalogs, old catalogs of, of whatever work really well, uh, old magazines. So, you know, we get a lot of uh, catalogs, people trying to sell us stuff. So those are always good to have around and use for glue paper. And the nice thing is you don't have to throw it away when you're done. If you let it dry, you can reuse it over and over again. All right, so maybe this one's going to go up. And you don't have to do vertical and horizontal lines. I tend to just because I have vertical and horizontal lines at the edge of my paper, but uh, diagonal lines are going to be much more, much more um, dynamic. Just to come down a little bit further and then this is going to go across and then later I can continue that if I want to so I like the glue stick number one because it's portable I can take it anywhere it's not a liquid so it doesn't get confiscated whenever I'm, I'm traveling and going through the airport um, and it, it works really well. I know some people really complain about stuff falling out, but I've been using Uhu glue stick for 20 some years now. And so I have journals that are 20 years old and stuff is still stuck in. So it works really well. Um, uh, but use what, what you have. Some people like to use acrylic medium. The only problem is for me is that I use water soluble materials. I use watercolor and I use watercolor pencil. And if I'm using acrylic medium to glue stuff down, the acrylic medium doesn't, it, it, it turns plastic, so it doesn't really accept that very well, okay? So anyway, so I've done some lines. I wanna share with you maybe one more kind of uh, strategy or technique, because again, at this, at this time, I'm not really worrying about making a lot of meaning. I'm just worrying about getting some stuff glued in that gives me some shapes and gives me some lines and gives me some texture. So really just thinking about how things kind of work in the background. Um, but the kind of the last thing that I want to share is tearing collage. Um, so I've got this part of a map. It's actually 
close to uh, from where I live here in Virginia. Um, but what's nice is that I love all the the words and the lines and stuff, and I could just glue it down, and that's a it's a very cool kind of texture thing. But what I want to do is I want to really make it more random, and uh, so I'm gonna tear it up. Uh, let me get get rid of this glue paper so it can dry and I have a fresh one um, move over this way. So what I'm going to do is just to start tearing this up and I want to try to be kind of random with it and I want to have some big pieces and some little pieces and I want to cut this straight here before I rip it up. I like having the straight edges because then those will be the edge pieces uh, when I glue them in. So if I, what I'm gonna try to do is I wanna try to cover a big section of a page. And so if I take this, I can, because it's cut with a straight line, I can glue it right in, okay? So I've got my fresh glue paper over here can't see me do this but just doing what I've done lots of glue on the back and what I like about this is that it's totally random but I still get that that map feel okay. and that one has a straight edge so I'll probably glue that one there So at this point, I'm not worrying about the meaning of my pages. And if you haven't tuned in, if this is your first time tuning in, um, I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it, it again. Uh, I jump around in my journal a lot. I don't, I don't um, focus on a single spread and and work and finish that. I, I jump around and oftentimes working just like I have been working with one material or working with uh, one technique and just putting a lot of different stuff into the journal on multiple pages and then what happens is things start to build up and what what I like is that accumulation of these small actions and that's something that you'll probably hear me say again and again is that I work in a, in a manner where it's an accumulation of small artistic acts and I think what what that allows is for it allows for discovery it allows for something to emerge that I could never think of so even though I'm sitting here just kind of randomly gluing in some maps what's going to happen is as I'm working ideas are going to start to pop into my head and then I'm going to start getting these ideas um, and then we're going to get into some writing and some uh, working with some particular images. And so all that's going to come together. So if you've just kind of been following along the last couple of times and you're just kind of wondering, like, where is this all going? What, what's going to happen? Um, I, don't, I don't work on a project. I just get to work and then see where it can take me. And there's a lot of fun and there's a lot of risk involved in that. I know some people really have to like I want they want to have a project. They want to know exactly what it's going to be. All right. Just kind of thinking about how much more I want to cover. I don't think I want to cover too much more. I just kind of like how the map is covering sort of this corner down here.
Yeah, I think this will be the last piece I glue in. So again, those straight lines that were cut earlier just allow me to line up the map pieces along the edge. And notice how I go right across uh, the the pages. Um, so that's why I like these hardbound books. Um, I know a lot of people use uh, spiral bound books, but with the hardbound books, I can do a continuous two page spread. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so I've got got some torn pieces. I've got some big wrapped pieces. I've got a just a big piece shapes, um, and of course I have my my lines that I did as well. So just something to kind of think about as you are working and using uh, using. There we go. <laughs> um, just just some things to think about as you're starting to use fodder, collage, ephemera, whatever you want to call it. So if you're kind of wondering, like I keep using this word fodder, um, if you're familiar with fodder, uh, a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's the paper, the ephemera that you glue in your journals. Yeah, that's how we, I use it. That's how my friend Dave and I use it, but it's also um, food. And so if you look up, look up the word fodder in the dictionary, it's the coarse, dry, food that we feed livestock. Um, so when Dave and I started doing journaling 20 years ago as the Journal Fodder Junkies, the first workshop that we ever did was called Journal Fodder Junkies of the World Unite. And we just took that moniker Journal Fodder Junkies as as our name. And um, that's how that came about. So speaking of the Journal Fodder Junkies, if you haven't joined the uh, online workshop group, Facebook group that I'm running, um, that's a good place to share anything that you're doing, um, especially if you've been following along in your journal and using the, the ideas and the techniques. Of course, um, I have to approve you, so just go on and, and, and ask to join and I'll approve you. And then you can share there, or you can also share in the comments. So if you've been following along, if you've been doing some of these things, I wanna see them, so share them. Uh, you can tag me, you can tag your friends. So just, just kind of let us know what you've been doing. Um, so anyway, um, that, I guess that about wraps it up. Let's see if anybody has any pressing questions that came up. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Nope, doesn't look like anybody has had some questions. But again, if you do get some questions as you're working, uh, feel free to post them in the comments at any time. Um, doesn't have to be right now, but whenever you want to, uh, you can post them in there. And like I said, post images of things that you have been doing and let us see what you've been doing. And if you don't want the world to see it, that's what that Facebook group is for. So it's the Journal Fodder Junkies online workshop group. Um, so, and yeah, so anyway, so thanks so much for joining me again. I will be live tomorrow evening. So uh, unfortunately I couldn't do it at 10 a.m. every day. Uh, so tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, I'll be back here sharing some ideas. I think what's on the agenda is some writing. Um, so we'll kind of dive into that. Uh, but I'll be sharing the rest of the week and we'll see how that goes and then maybe even into next week as well. So um, like I said, if you, if you have some questions, please put them in your comments and don't forget to share. If you really have been enjoying what you've been doing, then please, please share this. Let people know. Um, that's how things get get around. Oh, we had a, a question right before the end. Uh, what is the glue stick name? Uhu. So I use a Uhu glue stick. That's the only glue stick I use. You can use any glue stick. The problem is that Uhu is hard to find. Um, you can't really find it in brick and mortar stores. I don't know why. Uh, I buy mine on uh, Dick Blick. That's the company that I, I order from the most. And I usually get like 12 at a time because I go through them and I, I, I have them at all my workshops. So um, I use them, love them, been using them for a while. So uh, they do peel up a little bit. Sometimes you paint over them and they can peel up a little bit, but most glue stick can because it's water soluble. Um, so anyway, but again, if you have any other questions, post them on, on uh, the comments and please 
like I said, share, let other people know that I've been doing this and that it's going to continue uh, through the rest of the week and maybe even into next week or maybe even longer. Maybe this will be something that, that becomes a regular feature here on my Facebook page. So anyway, thanks so much and I hope you guys have an awesome day. And if you are quarantined at this time and uh, socially distancing yourself, this is a great way to keep yourself occupied. And so um, thanks so much again and I'll catch you later.